Happy Friday! <laughs> Friday the 13th. What could go wrong with this? Uh, absolutely nothing. Everything is going to go right. Or Every, everything, if everything is wrong, nothing seems right to you. If everything's wrong, you don't want to be right? Loving you is wrong. I don't want to be right. And with that note, uh, Joe's going to be finishing the live stream himself because I'm out. <laughs> <coughs> or unless somebody wants to join me. Anybody else? Any takers? No? <laughs> no? Guess I'm soloing this one. Well, welcome to the Aviator Direct live stream, guys. I'm Shannon. I'm Joe. And we have all kinds of fun stuff to talk about today. Uh, Joe, how do you feel about the loving you is wrong and uh, I don't want to be right, a.k.a. Uh, Friday the 13th and the world's going to collapse on us? How do you feel about that? I mean... It better hurry up already because since I've been alive, this has been said, it feels like three times a year. So it's going to happen if there are catastrophic events to be attended to. Come at me, bruh. Well, at least, you know, we made it past the whole Mayan calendar thing. That was like 2012. I this think. is true. Like all the doomsday preppers building bunkers and gathering weapons and like consolidating their families into a bunker in their backyard, like for nothing. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't all for naught. Um, they probably had a really good time with it, I'm sure. So, like, uh, you have a, do you throw a bunker party at that point? Or are you just like, dude, you can live like real life Fallout? I, I would. I would just like Fallout cosplay in my backyard. So, what kind of vault would you be though? Vault or would it be Vault Seventy Seven? You don't even know Vault Seven. Stop it. It's no, my own, it's my home vault. No, I'd make a vault. <laughs> vault Seventy Six. Or it'd be like a fraction, like Vault Thirty Six Point Twenty Eight. We do get to visit Vault Seventy Six in November though. Do just we? saying. Uh, I'm not gonna celebrate quite yet. We're going to see what happens, especially since Bethesda have already, has already stated that their Fallout 5 is right around the corner, guys. That, to me, is an admission that they know people aren't going to enjoy the online play as much as they want, or at least there's certain people. So they're already prepping Fallout 5. just kind of like, eh, shut up. Here you go. Uh, Tufu Joy, and he said, uh, he's all, the first thing I heard after uh, joining the cast is, come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that was specifically for you, Tufu. Tutu. Tufu! Tufu is now on the same time zone as us for the time being, so that's is he? pretty where, awesome. Where is he at? He's in Tennessee. He's like one of the only he's like one of the only ones there. Why don't you take a trip to Cleveland, man? It's only like, you know, nine hour drive. I almost said something wildly inappropriate, but I I, I caught it. I mean, go ahead. Maybe we can dump it. Well I mean, because there is a delay, so Brooke can like dump it quick enough, then it won't matter. Uh, no, there is no way to actually dump footage as it's going through our stream. So anything we say goes live. It's just what it is. Well, thanks, Zuckerberg. Anything else you want to mess up for us? Thanks, Zucker fail. <laughs> Thanks for sharing our information. Or we can just dump ourselves. At, at, and then you... At, beep. Oh, wait, sorry. I missed the beep. That, uh, that was like a real... That was, that was like a Godzilla beep. It was uh, like, beep. Still worked. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like a Godzilla scream. Uh, that could be worse. Uh, <laughs> I'm scared. And ear shattering. By so the way, I'll, guys... I'll spare you guys... To, to start this off, one thing. Uh, one thing real quick. Uh, next week, we uh, very well might have a special guest, uh, Joker from Joker Productions. Uh, we've been talking to him. He, uh, he's very interested to join us virtually via Skype. Uh, we were setting it up for next week. We've been doing some testing, and we might be able to have our uh, good friend on there, and we can discuss some cool tech news. And if there's anything NDA that we can't discuss, maybe he can give his feedback, and we'll just avoid it. Yeah, and we, we won't actually talk about the NDAs, and maybe you can just do that for us, and we'll comment. Well, we'll just say, you know what, we are not at liberty to comment. And at that point, he's free to make his own assumptions. Uh, I'll just pull the Bill Clinton. It depends on what it is. I did not overclock that processor. But I am wearing its thermal paste. The 8086 k is a high-bend 8700. <laughs> Five gigahertz and select situations. It, it, it's nothing but hot, and you can't do what we say, but you can say what we do. Ghost, yes. It is a Iron Man slash Tron shirt, yes. <laughs> Ghost is like, show off show off your shirt if it is what I think it is. At least he didn't tell you to take off your shirt like Marilyn Manson. That, well, then again, that dude's got problems. He, like, told the dude to take off his shirt and didn't even offer him, like, an alternate. That no, guy was, was just a jerk. Well, he was wearing a, a banner, and that was the thing. He was wrapping it around himself, and he was like, no, take off your shirt because it's not mine. But that's, like, the cardinal rule of concerts. You can't go to a concert wearing the shirt of the band you're going to see. That's so cliche. I've seen so many people do that. It's like, I'm going to go see Green Day. I'm going to wear a Dookie shirt. Well, that's the, that's the <laughs> point. That's exactly the point. So, like, the dude showed up in a Avenged Sevenfold shirt, and Marilyn Manson's like, that's not my shirt. Like, dude... 
Are you really that upset that fans really don't care about you get, anymore? They just want to hear the classics. Over, get over yourself since you look about as bad as Axl Rose looks now. Sorry, but sorry, no, sorry. Gonna, I was going to say he looked like um, an emo Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy. Dude, he, he seriously, like, something happened to him. Like, he, he looks like he looks like someone stuck. You know how we have that expanding foam that we ship our system to yes. keep everything safe? He looks like someone shoved that tube into him and just went, t- went to town. I mean, I, you're not wrong. I was gonna, I'm waiting for his Michael Jackson moment where he just kind of, someone flips a switch. He's going to have pro football and just die? No, he's oh. just. <laughs> I mean, sure. More or less to where, like, his physical form is just going to change. And I don't, I, at this point, I don't know if whether it's going to be similar to, like, what Michael Jackson did or if it's going to be, like, Jeff Goldblum from The Fly. But he doesn't have, like, an Everland Ranch or anything. By the way, how did this live stream start off like this? I don't understand how this happened. I blame myself. So, anyways. I, I blame you. Um, what do we got today? Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard about some of the recent leaks. It's funny because I, f- I feel like, before we really dive into this, I feel like some of these leaks are getting very intentional. Like, literally, it's being disclosed by the company that's pretending like they don't want it leaked. Because Everybody needs to stop leaking. It's a very leaky day. Uh, there's, I think, a, there's a time and a place for that leak where you're, you're designated leak areas. AMD and Intel, man, they're just, they've had too much Taco Bell. It's just leak city. I mean, yeah, or they just need to go see a doctor because things ain't right. Well, you know, when you're dripping like that, sometimes you just got to deal with it. Yeah. So uh, on, the, uh, on the leaks upon leaks upon leaks, one of the first ones was the uh, new Ryzen uh, second gen chips. A little, that, basically just a lot more of what we've already seen. Yeah, basically, you yeah, got 2700X, 2600. And now they're doing the they're doing the fill in like the Ryzen 3 2300X 2500X. Um, so for instance, the Ryzen 3 1300X uh, basically is replaced with a 2300X. So it's going to be a little bump, probably some figure you know, like we saw in the previous ones, 10 15 percent performance uh, delta. So a small performance gain over the previous chips, along with being a little better with memory. So. I mean, it just gives you more value options, which means we can, obviously, our customers can benefit as we build Ryzen-based systems, since those have actually become pretty damn popular, in my opinion. Yeah. I've seen a lot more, I mean, let's face it, back in the FX days, where we were building one AMD system a month, maybe, if that. And now Ryzen, we get them all the time. I feel like we get multiple a day at this point. Yeah, I and mean, it's definitely increased. It feels like a lot of people that are trepidatious about upgrading in some way, shape, or form, they're waiting at the right moments to upgrade as previously i feel like everybody would try to talk themselves into upgrading sooner than they need to it feels like people are starting to buy smart they're starting to buy ryzen (laughs) what you're saying is the opportunity has ryzen for amd i mean (laughs) you're welcome is there there a ryzen why you have to keep making these ryzen puns well, I figure, you know, it's, uh, the core of the subject is that the i7s and i5s are just uh, becoming a little too heavy on the pock pocket and... Pock pocket? On the hot pocket. Pock pocket! Pock pocket. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? how did I just roll with that without catching what I was saying? What's I happening? Know, your face drooped a little bit. Your eyes are uh, pock pocket. I feel, like this, I feel like this is just falling apart. Uh, Intel We're, core pocket. Uh. Well, I feel like I feel like with everything, I feel like Intel has literally just rested on their laurels so long, like we've said a hundred times before, yeah, no. that now, even though they're trying to play catch up, they're so far behind that they're literally going to be potentially in a uh, in a position to where they're going to be quite a bit behind, like AMD was with FX, where literally they were struggling to keep up. Well, uh, to me, it almost feels like for a while, I, and I know I've said this before, AMD felt completely absent from the CPU race for a while, like they either just didn't care about competing with Intel anymore, or because I, I know they but have a lot of various uh, focus with their APUs and stuff. 9590, five gigahertz, Joe. Oh God, no, please. Six monitors, I get it. Whatever. Stock cooler. <sighs> Vomit. <And Yeah. laughs> what it feels like now is what they were doing is instead of doing what Intel's been doing and, and determining what they were going to release every year or every other year to compete, they're like, let's determine and kind of average out or predict what Intel's increase and where they're going to be eight years from now. And let's beat them at that point in time. Let's come out with something that's going to make them struggle and have to reinvent themselves so aggressively that it's going to give us a huge edge in the race. And that's what it feels like to me that they did. They knew that once AMD and multi-core usage started to kind of become households with each other, that's what they extrapolated on. And they're doing a great job with it, which is something we will talk about here soon. Uh, 28 core, you know, uh, high, high performance demo. That was cool stuff. Uh, how did that work out again? It, oh, that's right. They kind of disappeared. It happened? They, they were so fast, they disappeared off the show floor. It happened? 
It I didn't happened. know that took place. <laughs> I thought that was a rumor. It was all a dream. <laughs> it was all a rumor. By the way, these uh, Ryzen 5, obviously, they're rumors slash leaks slash probably AMD gave these to someone and said, you know, show these off because I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, dude, if I was... Good, dude, dude, more power to them, man. Dude, if I, was, if, I was, if I was AMD, I'd straight up be like, listen, these are launching in like three months. Just run it on a benchmark that's connected to the network so it gets out there. Someone's going to notice it. Just and don't tell anybody where you got it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to burn your lawn. Well, you know, get off my lawn. I'd burn your lawn. Get that's off my plane. Snakes on a plane? No, as man. long as it's not Air spiders on a plane, Harrison I'm okay. Ford. Oh, on. wow. You didn't say the right voice. I didn't catch it. You're usually really good with voices. What happened to you? Who I broke mean, that, you? That, Who broke you, Joe? But that is like Harrison, Harrison Ford's like raspy, get off my plane. You mean when he crashed his recent plane like a couple of years ago? That might be about when it sounded like that. Oh, no. <laughs> So basically, I see this, uh, I really see this as just, I don't want to say nail in the coffin for Intel, but I feel like AMD is going to really be gouging out some of the mainstream market that, you know, Intel has still been able to play and dominate in in a large way. These are going to be, these are just going to be another option for people to have against like Core i5s or even i3s from Intel side especially once um, AMD starts to rein in some of the TDPs and things like that. Well, I will say this to be fair, okay, because I know probably from a lot of the things I've said on these live streams, I appear to be an AMD fanboy. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I agree. We both probably seem that way yeah, at this point. It, it's more or less I'm not. I, I really do prefer Intel over AMD, but the problem is I've been waiting for AMD to start to actually reasonably compete with Intel that I'm more or less just giving Intel a really hard time about it because, well, it's been a long time coming. And we, we all, we, well, let's be completely transparent on this. We are, both of our systems are, our Intel. all of our systems are Intel. Our Intel, right. No, primarily everything in the office is Intel that we use. Um, the thing of it is, AMD is going the right direction with, with the two main things that they're tapping on, and that's price point and that's multi-core usage. And what is bigger in the, Amer in the market for really anything globally is it businesses and, and educational application or is it consumers and gaming because to me i can tell you firsthand business usage and and research and educational and scientific whatever you want to name it that is a much bigger market to tap into a much bigger money maker uh, than consumers and that's what's going to end up happening long term intel is probably still going to cater to gamers because that's what they've been focusing on right but I think if AMD keeps it up, man, you're going to start seeing businesses with Red Rippers and Ryzen's, and there's nothing Intel's going to be able to do about and, it. Because of that and price the point. Epic surface, server chips. There, yep. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, Baidu just a, few, a month Baidu. or so ago, <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest providers in Asia, they actually deployed Epic chips, and Lisa Su was there like celebrating it. Yeah. And I feel like this is the direction the industry's turning until this is Intel just the beginning. until Intel steps it up, which this is going to be great if they do because it's going to be a hell of a race like they did back in Conroe days. They're just going to have to stop getting um, used to their margins, whatever they may be, and start doing the right thing by themselves. What you're saying is they're going to have to rise to the occasion? Again? <laughs> Dude, I'm, I, I can only face palm so much in one day. My Dude, head's you, hurt. you haven't even double face palmed yet. Come on, you got to Picard that. I uh, know. At that point, I'm just going to punch myself in the face and just fall back right out of the chair. Well, as long as it's not me, I'm really, I'm, I'm pretty complacent. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. There's no nuclear explosion. What are you doing? <laughs> Tufu, yeah, you got a point. He said uh, Intel got complacent over the years, and AMD made that real easy for a while. Yeah, AMD simply didn't fight back, and I feel like. They lost a, a decent amount of their team and the decent amount of the engineering capability, and See, so they had to fight back across. That's the thing; they weren't fighting back on the surface. But I feel like through all this time, the, the, everything that Ryzen and Threadripper is based on has been in development since then. Of course, it has. It's not like they, it's something they put together in a year. But that's the point. It, they were kind of like um, the Romans. Uh, you know, the whole the the story of the the Trojan horse. That's kind of what it's it's about for me, to a degree. So what you're saying is, AMD gave Intel a virus. I'm lost. Trojan. Dude, the the Romans and the Trojan horse. I get, it's, yeah. yeah it's, what does that have to do with Trojan man? I was talking about like Trojan, you know, Trojan virus. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> you doubled. You got double. We got it. <laughs>
That was it just worked. Natural, that was just natural reaction too. Punch today in the face. I'm not sure where that came from, but I'm happy that's there. I I don't know if you could punch today in the face enough. Like that does just doesn't do it justice. I feel like, like today punched us in the face. Like I feel like he needs to be kicked in the face, and I'm talking repeatedly. Like, I'm talking, and I don't know if it's like like uh, steel Shawn toe Michael, boot. No, I don't know if it's like Shawn Michaels like sweet chin music kicked in the face, or if it's gonna be like um, uh, what's his name, uh, Roundhouse kicked in the face. I just I don't know. <laughs> It's too early to tell. Maybe I'll tell you later in the live stream. Oh, this is going to go great. So, yeah, um, the, the leak, 2300, 2500X. I mean, uh, it just seems like more of the same with improvements. It is, but that's the thing. It's it's a replacement for the existing first gen, and so it's it's good. I mean, 2700X has been a marked improvement. Now these, pending they are what has been reported, can be really good. I mean, these are going to be great chips. I think these have the potential, once again, to displace a little bit more market share, and that's just going to give them, once again, more revenue to reinvest to make better technology, like the 7 nanometer that we know is coming. I mean, they've been announced. Well, let's just hope that everything goes right with it. Well, especially now that basically Global Foundries was like, yeah, we don't have enough. That's actually something I heard about recently. Global, um, Global Foundries uh, simply didn't have enough uh, capability to support AMD's capacity, so they're also working with TSMC as well. Really? Yeah. There's something. I meant what are to, what are you searching? Hold on. Um, I don't know if, if if you have heard about this or anybody else, but I came across a really interesting article a while ago uh, about uh, this material. It's called tetronite, right? Yeah, replacement for silicon. Uh, replacement for silicon, and, and how ridiculously amazing it is with power consumption. Like they were able to increase like the performance of processors by a thousand times using like two watts. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Well, that, but see, that's uh, I, that's brilliant in theory or on paper, but actually in, theor in theory, Shannon. In theory. In theory. In theory. Everything's in theory, Joe. It's all in theory till you see it in practice. In theorem. We, I think we've heard that phrase far too many times at this point. <laughs> we've literally just repeated it to each other like five times. Now, moving on to some uh, Intel stuff. What's up, Dave? And, and then. Hey, no, Dave. No, no and then. <laughs> Shannon, you big stud muffin. <laughs> I wasn't going to read that. Why you do this to me? Why you do this? Why you do this, Gooby? Why you do this, Gooby? And you were going to read it. No and then. Chad ch uh, Chad fired back no and then because Kevin and them were going back Sup. and forth apparently. Sup. Sup. Kevin. What's up? No, please, God, no. <laughs> Got to throw back to like, what was it, 99? 2000. 2000, yeah. <laughs> um, Intel may be uh, shedding the uh, Extreme Edition moniker, which is really weird since that's been a staple of that's been a staple of uh, Intel engineering. <laughs> yeah, by the way, <laughs> the, the, Francois is not one of the most liked people. That's for sure. Um, uh, but I mean, if, to me, that's their admission that their product is no longer extreme, and they know it. That's the opposite well, of what Intel should be doing. Right that's the thing. That tweet you just saw, that's Francois. That is one of their head like performance engineers slash uh, architects yeah. for like over 20 years. He helped like launch the original Extreme Edition. And he's the one saying like, it's going bye bye. And well, he's no longer there. He left like a couple years ago. Oh, really? But he's like, yeah, it's going away. And it's like, that's not something you just look at and go, oh, yeah, whatever. He's just talking. No. He's, he's very likely to be right, but my question is, is it going to be replaced with another moniker? Or are they literally saying, like, are they, are they, in a way, kind of just, like, not necessarily waving the white flag, but, like, laying it down, saying, like, well, AMD, every time we put out Extreme Edition, AMD's been like, here, let me drop it on the table and just destroy I mean, what you did. I honestly, I hope they don't come out with another moniker because Extreme was the last one that made sense. Because every moniker after that, every code name they've had for a chipset, you know, Sandy, Ivy, Copy. No, KB. Copy. Abby. I mean, was it just flabby, flabby processors? Just Intel flabby processors? They've got a lot oh, of. they're bendable. They Flexible, got, put them on your wrist and touch your PC. You no, know, two gigahertz. They've got a lot of lakes to talk about. That's all I got to say. Everything is theirs. And they're apparently drowning in every single one of them right now. Recently, yes. Their, their lakes have been drowning. They've, they, things have been drowning in their lakes. Uh, drowning or drying up? William Johnston, oh boy. Hey, Shannon and Joe, are you ready to, for me to make you laugh today? Evil grin. Uh, can we laugh when we're losing our uh, Extreme Edition moniker? Because, you know, that's very important to us. I mean, bring, it, that's bring it on, Billy. Let's see what you got to say, William. I feel like, uh, I feel like uh, you've got a tough one if you're going to try to make us a laugh here. Um, what does he know that we don't know? I know. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm going to pretend. <laughs> I'm 
I feel like we need to clip that and just have that on like cue, just ready to go for any time something just weird happens. I mean, sure. Like the one time when the set just falls on our backs and we like die, they can just play that. The so at least letters collapse behind us. The those things are heavy. They're like aluminum, dude. Uh, they would yeah. they would just stab you straight. That, that's a quick trip to the hospital. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a good one. Intel. But a because, great self defense weapon. <laughs> I wonder if it would work like a boomerang. I could technically pull that off and try. I mean, give it a shot, mate. But. I don't know how Alex would feel about that, because Alex is right there. It's okay. <laughs> it's still quick enough, and then it won't matter. <laughs> so, with the with the Extreme Edition going away, like the naming at least, I do, I'm, let's face it, I mean, the HEDT has always been the one that's, the high-end desktop has always been the one using Extreme Edition na um, naming. And every single one of the processors now is overclockable. So what does Extreme Edition really mean at this point? Besides, here's the highest, super expensive SKU well, you can the, buy. The K-series, at least, you know, as you know, non-K CPUs aren't overclockable. They are to a degree, but it's not enough for it to really be marketed as something that's overclockable. But I get your point. But you look at the high-end desktop, X299, every single chip's overclockable. Uh -huh. There's not one that's locked. I know. So there's nothing. I mean, Extreme Edition used to mean, like, this is your overclocker chip. Now every single one can be overclocked, so what does it really mean? Well, that's the thing. The Extreme Edition went from something that actually used to mean something, that was a, a name, a label that actually meant something. Now all it is is an excuse for Intel to just price gouge all their processors, in a matter of speaking. Because I remember- They would first... never do that, Joe. Never. Oh, why never. not? They, they have all the reason to be, be a very reasonable company, and I never get phone calls um, about specific reasons as to why people won't choose Intel, ever. Never. Ever. Never, ever, ever. Mm -mm. Not like not like they released an 18-core $2,000 CPU. I will say Add something. Uh, I have had phone calls from people that used to work for Intel that uh, tell me they want an AMD processor and they won't consider Intel. And I don't ask questions. It's no problem. You want what you want. That's good. So there's, uh, that, there's at least that to be said. Dave, love you, bud. Miss you too, buddy. Um, uh, I, I guess that is what it is. Um, also, Intel 10 nanometer, basically people have gotten some hands on some of the new Cannon Lake and uh, reports so far are 2.7 times improved uh, improved density over the 14 nanometer existing node that they have. Seriously? Yeah, so the Tech, Intel, uh, Tech Insights uh, intelligence firm, they got a hold of a, a Lenovo ID pad, idea pad, which I know I heard recently was released in, I think, Asia markets. Japan. And it was i3, 8121U. China. <laughs> China. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Then please proceed. <laughs> and it's based off of Cannon Lake. China. It's based off of Cannon Lake. I 10 nanometer. <laughs> and when they, put, and when, and when, they uh, when they took it and basically took this thing and put it under an uh, electron microscope, they were able to see that the uh, overall density of the 10 nanometer node was 2.7 times or... 100.8 megatrans, uh, megatransistors per millimeter squared, which oh, I is... I thought you were going to say that under a microscope, they're actually going to see the transistors laughing all the way to the bank. Uh, I feel like they were more just seeing the transistors that they realized that was probably the only chip that passed yield, since <laughs> everything we've heard about 10 nanometer basically falling apart. Can you repair... Do you repair your processes under warranty? No, we just throw them away. Why? Because we can't. <laughs> do, can you give us a 10 nanometer, 10 nanometer processor? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Buy a laptop from Asia? And it's soldered on because that's how we can control what processor you're getting. Yeah. I mean, it's, I understand people have problems with fabs, but 10 nanometer was supposed to be here a while ago. And yeah. in fact, the fact that they, the fact that there's actually something like working at this point is cool, but I still wonder when are we going to see it? And by that point, seven nanometer isn't going to be long in the tooth, but it's going to be out for at least a quarter for AMD, which makes me question why they're even bothering with it when Global Foundries is utilizing third gen FinFET on their seven nanometer already. FinFET. 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 That's a fun word to say, FinFET. FinFET. Or as they say in Japan, FinFET. How do they say it in, his, in uh, Russia? FinFET. FinFET. How do they say it in India? FinFET. Alex, did he, pronounce, did he pronounce that one correctly? Nope, he said no. That's okay. See, you didn't pass the Alex. You, you didn't ask me how to say it in German. How do you say it in German? <laughs> Kevin with the Mountain Dew reference. Good Lord. No, I can't approach this right now. Tufu, you have a Chinese person watching. Chinese person watching. I know, I know, Tufu, you're, well, I, I don't, wow. I've got to avoid saying this. Wow, I am such a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the high road on the Asian market with the microscope. Uh, come on, dude. <laughs> really? There's kids watching. Come on, man. Joe's watching. Stop it, Tufu. Wow. 
Wow. Fuck. I... <laughs> How did this happen? I don't know, dude. And another leak from AMD. Oh my god, this is just nothing but leaks. More second Why gen. Why don't we just start talking about dumps? More second gen chips. <laughs> except we, low power. Can we can we just like do like a quick synopsis? Like, okay, so what do we got here? <laughs> leaks, leaks, leaks. Today we have leak. Hold on here. AMD. Hold on. Leak. Let's just leak on Intel. The leak. AMD. Leak. Intel. Leak. Intel. Leak. AMD. The end. Uh, now we're just gonna talk about turtles and brownies for the rest of this live stream. <laughs> Did you lose my notes? Where are we? Oh, no, it's, it's the same place. I, I have. You know, organization in place. Where you, you, have, you, have, you have the skills yeah. to keep this under control. Okay. I know it. So what's the next AMD leak? Uh, <laughs> and how wet is it? E series processors. So Ryzen 7 2700E and Ryzen 5 2600E. Where do they get, where do they, where, how do they determine these letters? Well, then again, that what same thing. What does it stand for? Why are you so secretive? These things are supposed to be competing. For efficiency? <laughs> Maybe. Well, then again, think about this. Uh, uh, Intel's uh, moniker, Intel's moniker for power efficient processors is T. Hmm. What, so what does that apply? I mean, it makes just as much sense. Tiny. Energy efficient. <laughs> Brooke, thank Tiny. you, Brooke. Thank you. Tiny. That's what I said. Efficient. Yeah, but e. she said energy efficient. Well, then. What if they're just efficient at cooling? What well, if they're not energy then efficient? They want to be like Ryzen 27E. Is it 2700 Re? What? No, 2700 Re. <laughs> That's it. No, it, that would, it would be Re if it was really energy efficient. But then if it was 2700 Re. Then if it was T for Travis, Re. And then you, you'd have to train like your AMD reps to have jazz hands when they say it too, like Ryzen 2700 Re. Oh boy. Oh boy. William Johnston. Intel and AMD have more leaks than the FBI. We're not going to go there. Uh, We're not going to go there. Mm -mm. No, I don't want to wake up dead tomorrow. Uh, uh, the, William, I will say that the uh, nanometer reference, there is actually a difference. It's actually a, the size of the, it's actually the size of the lithography. It's actually the size of the overall uh, topology of the chip. So what it is is your uh, all of the transistors and the specific die sizes are controlled by how many billions of tri or trillions or depending on how you how many transistors you pack into that silicon or whatever substrate they may use late mm -hmm. later. But it will late. it will actually make a difference in the size because that's overall the process technology. So the size is actually a tangible difference. That's why I'm saying seven nanometer from Global Foundries is actually something that I believe Intel should at least be exploring, and maybe they are, and we just don't know. But being that's ten nanometer and they're still fighting with it, what are you what what are you doing? You're quit, saying quit creeping on people. You're saying you're like creeping on people's Facebook. You were saying. I was saying seven nanometer is a tangible thing, and what are you doing? I'm scared. Don't worry about it. I don't know what you're doing anymore. Shannon's always scared until it, it benefits him in, in a way in which he never <laughs> would have imagined. <laughs> oh God, Wiki AMD leaks, Doctor Evil reference. They, there are too many awkward silence today. I don't think so, Joe. You can you can never have enough awkward silence. With me and Joe, awkward silence is like a way of communicating. I think at this point. You, you gotta have you know, time to process your emotion in the moment. It's really important. <clears throat> so basically, the 2700X, 2700X, 2700E, those are 20, 2700E, <laughs> 2600E, I'm gonna get this out eventually. Those Take are, <laughs> those are the, the only difference really, they're exact same spec except their uh, base clocks are like quite a bit slower, like the, the Ryzen 5 model is about 500 megahertz slower, where the Ryzen 7 model is like 900 slower, and that's pretty significant. It's a pretty big jump. So while you as are long saving as the price points there, it does, then it'll you know it'll be there, it'll be lined up accordingly. Otherwise, if it's not that much, it's just going to force everybody to go to a specific processor over the other. Well, I mean, in reality, I don't know. I guess depending on the market, like if you're talking like business systems where you know you want to save power and you don't want you don't need the crazy high performance, I think you could probably pull off with these chips. But otherwise. Why would you go from 95 watt to 45 watt on your like your desktop, your main system, mm -hmm. and lose 900 megahertz? Makes no sense. Because then if you decide, oh, I'm gonna make it go faster, you overclock it. Well, there goes your power savings. If these can even be overclocked, I'm well, not it's, sure. It's it's dependent on user. You have somebody that cares more about efficiency. Maybe they're gonna have uh, kind of like what you and I do. You have an HTPC that's just gonna be used to manage that, that's what I'm cable saying. subscription or your streaming. That's gonna be 45 watts. You're not gonna care. But then you get a gaming system. It's 95 watts. Like. 
Whereas, like, if you build an HTPC and, you're, and you, have a, you use a thread ripper on it, then, well, you probably need to re-examine life choices. Yes. You OK. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> a little hot in here, but maybe this is just me. It's kinda, hot, hot in her. This is this is me starting to kind of lose like my sanity a little bit, kind of like Beavis and Butthead in the desert, and they decide to eat a cactus. These uh, <laughs> was that cactus or peyote? I'm not sure. Oh, it was peyote. <laughs> it was 100% peyote, and then Rob Zombie showed up. Oh man, size matters, Kev. Well, then again, you're like six foot nine or seven foot six or whatever the hell you are. You're huge. So are you, the, are you one of the guys that drives a really big truck? No, he actually drives like a Chrysler 300. Okay. Um, new Intel 9th gen processor leak is shows them still being based on Coffee Lake. So, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. I'm not sure how to feel about this. I, <laughs> I feel like I feel like everyone was like thinking, you know, 10 nanometers is going to be here. Everything's going to happen. But there's been some leaks recently. Um, I mean, Intel leaked it themselves. 9600K already? Wow, this, is this just me or does it feel like Intel is just pounding out new fabrication? Uh, right? That's because every time they launch something, once again, let me let me demonstrate it. AMD goes, oh, that's cool. Here, have this. And they yeah. just like drop it on the table. Uh, here, every time you launch something, there you go. And then they're like, well, that didn't work. And so then they have to like re-release something new. Like, that kind of smells funny, but it's faster. <laughs> yes. Can I pet it? I wasn't talking about you. Oh, okay. Come on, dude. Well, I, I know better. I don't even have to ask. True, but we are live streaming, and you, I don't. I, not right now. Time, place. Time, place. Like we're we're leaking right now. We're leaking. We're leaking. We're leaking internal information at this point. We're leaking. Our own internal information. Mm. So, <laughs> basically, with that, now one thing that's suspiciously missing is the <clears throat> the i7 parts off this list. Because they have three or two i3 models and like five i5 models. Yet there's no i7s. Gee, no i7s. No more extreme moniker. What could that possibly hint toward Intel? <clears throat> well, I'm Do pretty you think sure. think i7 could be the new extreme? I feel like 9700K, which I mean, following the 9600K that they listed on their own page, could put. To, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm tangled. Oh, God, you got I'm tangled in all the cords. I'm no. Tangled. No. Ah. This, is, this, this, is the day, this is the day Joe got dies, guys. Sorry. I got died. Joe, Joe got died. Guys, Joe I got, got died. died. Go get died. <laughs> so this just further proves, you know, that they're really trying to catch up with the uh, Ryzen train that basically ran them over on some recent stuff. And they still don't have an 8-core mainstream chip, so I'm guessing the i7 model will have a 8-core model like it's been rumored at the Z390, potentially. Well, people were, well, let's see. Um, there's uh, William Johnson. So people were complaining when Intel changed boards slash sockets, and now when they don't get off Coffee Lake for years, people complain, Intel can't win. What? Uh, I, I haven't heard any complaints about them. Like, change the socket already, Intel. That's like the most common complaint is anytime they provide improvements, like the shortest window. But that's what he's saying. Is it like they're, they're complaining that, he had, that they replace boards and sockets all the time. Right. And now since they're not getting off Coffee Lake for years, well, Coffee Lake hasn't even been around for years. It no, hasn't even been it's a been year yet. a year. The point being, J William, is not that we're upset that it's Coffee Lake still. We just want to see them finally get to the new manufacturing node because we're at 14 nanometer, like plus plus, which means 14 nanometer has been respun, I don't know how many times at this point. And so I feel like it's, I feel like they're just trying so hard to hit this 10 nanometer while AMD is like, hey guys, see you later. And they just basically jump to seven and, I feel like that as that becomes higher efficiency, that because your IPC comes from your latency and your efficiency. So when you take and you have a much better, I'm <laughs> when you take and you've got much better latency, that improves your IP, IPC performance. And they're not far behind Intel now. So having it seven seven nanometer may be the ticket to. Are you watching the light switch on the camera? Yes, I am. Okay, I thought so. Also, I11, Tufu. You guys talk, can you guys talk about how you feel about Intel's TikTok release model? They don't. They got rid of TikTok a while back. It got old. Yeah, it got really old because you're like, hey, tick, sweet, talk, stop, tick, hey, talk, stop, it, tick, no, talk, all right. So, so now they go, they go new process technology, then they go refinement, then they refresh. So, 
now they're now they're pushing that it's window still, because still they can't. TikTok, it's just they don't like. We're, 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 it's like differences. But to finish with William jo Johnson's question, uh, William Johnson's question, he yeah. said, um, "Coffee Lake for years, people complaining Intel can't win. Intel can win. The thing is, they were supposed to be off of. They're supposed to be like Cannon Lake or something, off 10 nanometer." A couple of years ago, but they've delayed that timeline due to the manufacturing problems. They're stalling. Well, they're stalling because they can't deliver a good yield product yet. Buying and their time. And you know what? And, and to be fair, any company like Intel, any company like NVIDIA, they'll never be able to win. There's always going to be naysayers. There are always going to be people that have something to complain about. That we, is, said, we said we dislike naysayers, yet we're being naysayers about the coffee like stuff. Um, I don't have a problem with Coffee Lake. I really don't have a pro Again, I don't have a problem with Intel. I'm just being critical because, well, why not? Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's it's kind of our job to criticize what they do because we want to make better products overall. Yeah, I mean, we're not, and we're not going to let the shortcomings of anybody stop us from making great products. We're still going to make killer machines, so yeah, it is what it is. And I just want to state, Tufu mentioned an i11. I mean, that would make sense, right? i5, i7, i9, i11. But I think what Intel should do, and I'll give this to you for free, Intel, they should do an i12 to kind of throw off that odd number uh, because the association of even numbers through the human mind, it, it tends to line up for people. So that's what they need to do to kind of change people's thought process uh, between this race of you know, processors between them and AMD. But they won't. They'll, they'll probably do i11, it'll be predictable, and then they're just gonna continue to force people to believe that Intel will continue being predictable. Now, William Johnson said something. He said, true, but Intel doesn't have an issue with thermals or clock speed at 14 nanometer like AMD does. So they can afford to stay on older and cheaper 10 nanometer while AMD is forced to move to newer 7 nanometer to play catch up. But in Intel doesn't have 10 nanometer yet. They're still at 14 nanometer plus plus. And I also feel like that that depends on what your opinion is on problem with thermals. Because when you have yes. process when you have certain processors, where to overclock it to the smallest degree, you are forced to undo what they should have fixed at the factory, you got a problem. I mean, you're talking to somebody that adopted Sandy Bridge when it was first released, and I was just <laughs> mind blown at how well you could overclock those things and the temperatures they yielded. And then you go to Ivy Bridge, and people were so excited, they're like, yay, I'm gonna put this $35 processor right out of my system, and I'm gonna overclock it, and what, why is it overheating? Why is it at 100C? Well, no, 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 it's only 300 megahertz. Nope, what? gotta delay it. Why, why is it? Or better, better yet, Joe, better yet. We have cooled some Skylake X chips on air. Stock, how well does that work? It doesn't. What happens, Depending, Joe? Listen, when you have to start actually looking at the TDP rating of heat sinks, something has gone wrong. Because I remember a day and age where you really didn't have to worry about that. Just heatsink processor. Like the TDP rating was just kind of a technicality. Like this is what our heatsink is capable of handling to demonstrate kind of the extent of the design. But at that point, it was all marketing blurb. Like it had nothing to do with real world application. Now it's real world application. And it, that's that's entirely chip maker's fault. That goes for both AMD and Intel. But that's the thing. See, like, I feel like, I feel like Intel is now doing what AMD did like with the FX9590, where literally at stock, you can't cool the damn chip really well no. without going to really extreme measures. Even if you have three monitors. But if you have five and one of them Done. 1440p, then you're good. Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it, won't do it, shouldn't do it. This, hey, John Heil joined and he said, whoa. <laughs> Let's whoa. see. Uh, yeah, William, you know, uh, they should have soldered them. They didn't. But either way, even the mainstream chips now, Joe, you can speak to this as well. 8700K. It runs hot. It does. They, it they admit hot. it. They run really warm. And I feel like, you know what? I feel like Intel, they're, they're, they're taking those omissions of small things, small differences that would make a huge difference in how their product performs. And it's such a minute thing. I mean, you're you're saving nothing by doing this, yet they're doing it. And it's like, it just blows me away. They already skipped the i8, William. That's why there's i9s. <laughs> uh, Dave, Dave Ratray says, uh, I think AMD is gonna take the crown back. Maybe not for long, but I think we might see the tide turn. I think we are already seeing the tide turn. It's just turn. It's just really slow. And you know what? They t they kind of went with a similar idea to Intel, and then when they came out with the A series processors, I feel like that was the wrong time, wrong place to actually do that. Ryzen, I think, should have been the A series processors. You know, A three. Yeah, yeah, like the, the the APU stuff. Yeah, they should have just like Intel's I, AMD's A. And then there's another uh, there's another little leak. Uh, I, th I feel like this was kind of intentional, but some uh, leaks for mobile 
Intel, Whiskey Lake U and Ember Lake, Ember Lake Y. Basically they're, and it's actually really surprising, 15 watt TDP chips and they're replacing the previous versions. So figure like wow. your, uh, figure like your standard Core i7 8550U, you can now get an 8565U that's 4.5 gigahertz uh, turbo versus 4.0 gigahertz on the previous 8550. Wow. So that's actually really good for a laptop. I mean, no, when you that's think impressive. About, okay, hats off. When, when you think about that, that's a four core eight thread processor in a laptop that could be a really strong performer because let's face it, a lot of things you do only use single or dual, only use one or two cores. Right, and now I, I, I wish this weren't a, uh, what came first, a chicken or the egg situation with laptops because I feel like we kind of hit a wall with our cooling efficiencies in laptops. So it's kind of forcing chip makers to get more efficient with the power draw and the thermal limits rather than just trying to come up with better ways to cool these things for mobile applications. You know? Yeah, I, I you know, I, like it was sweet to see desktop processors and notebooks and then you get to like the Intel 2011-3 and they're like, no way, <laughs> nope, not again, <laughs> not again. Could you imagine cooling that? That would be insane. Um, Dude, what, which chipset was it, X58? The first like i7 extreme processors when there were notebooks that had those like processors Like 965s, yeah. We had them. Um, it required a significant amount of R&D on our part, not even from the manufacturer standpoint, because we had a Clevo like D9, D900F. Significant amount of R&D on our part to make sure that we were able to get those things cool and remain cool with confidence before we sold them. Because out of the box, these things were like awful with cooling. So we did our own thing made sure the product was acceptable, then we pushed it to market. So I just wish we could get back to that, but without having to really fix, again, somebody else's mistake. But we'll still do it. We're always here to do it. We deal with processors left and right to make sure that people get the best out of the product, and uh, we'll make whatever modifications we need to to make it work at the and, end of the day. And by the way, on that same leak, I want to, one, one extra oh, thought did on I leak? Well, that's another story. I'm trying to get my shoes out of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. There was a mention of new X3 CPUs, which everyone's heard, you know, the new uh, Basin Falls refresh uh, coming toward the later, latter part of the year, they were saying. Basin Falls. Uh, that's, that's X299, for those who aren't familiar with the internal uh, nomenclature for, <laughs> for the chipset. And so that could be really exciting because if Intel listened to the community, maybe we'll see soldered chips coming to X299, which could be a real game changer on the HEDT side or the high-end desktop side. I just can't, is it, does it really, I mean, I'm sure it adds a significant amount to the manufacturing process to have soldering chips, which is why they made the decision, the decision almost 10 years ago to decide no more soldered chips. It doesn't actually take a massive uh, effort to solder the IHS. Or just simply replace the thermal compound with liquid metal, call oh. it a day. Yeah, and just seal off the SMD so that there's no problem with it. But the problem is uh, s liquid metal can flow out, so they would have to have a way of controlling that. Because it's like that's 2018, shipping. they I'm sure they could figure it out. I'm sure they could, but the thing is, it's obviously it's some R and D work they'd have to do. Intel is a company that probably has Skynet locked away in a little tesseract somewhere. We'll never know about I it. I really hope not. Oh, do you know it? Well, you, so people have likely died over the technologies that Intel has created internally, and it's just like sweep under the rug. We're gonna give your comp your family like three million dollars and. Shh. So what you're saying is Come we're on. next now that we know this. Like they're watching it right now and the Could black helicopter. The okay. black you're gonna hear a black helicopter and all of a sudden their live stream is gonna go offline. All That's I know is this it. that it is the human mind can be creative up to an extent, and I feel like a lot of movies out there were based on some truths. Or some idea. Exactly. <clears throat> we're, you get ideas from real world experiences most of the time, or at least fractions of it. Now, so William Johnson asked a really good question. He said, Anything new on Intel Discrete GPUs? I'd love to see a real three way video card market. Not until next year. Not until, but we did hear that potentially, or uh, we rumored uh, that potentially something at CES would be shown. So, Oh, man, we, I hope so. I would really be interested to Who go do see. I got to take the dinner to find out more about that, huh? Uh, well, I'm sure we can figure that out. And we can get out to Vegas and. Uh, if we do see something, we will definitely be uh, showing it to you guys. We'll do a live stream about it from the show floor or wherever they happen to be showing it at so that we can show you guys what's coming for Intel. But I really do hope, I mean, I hope upon hope Intel comes out with a uh, really good discrete GPU because w this market is in dire need of a good entry into the gaming market to break up the monotony that's happened over the past I would say at least five to seven years. I would love to find to see ways to where you could just continue to compound GPUs on something and it's efficient. I mean, that's that's in a perfect world scenario because you're. But that's what DX12 is going to do. DX12 allows you to just stack them up to wherever. 
Sure, but there, I think there's always going to be challenges to a degree, right? And um, it's kind of like SLI, everybody. There was at one point in the market, in the industry, where people felt that if you just threw as much hardware at something as possible, that it would be utilized. A lot like the there was the skull trail systems where everybody was under that impression. For oh boy, reason. you're talking the dual socket 771. The skull trail dude, seven, yeah, 771, uh, Xeon E 5520s, you know, you name it, X 5530s, whatever you have it. And that, that wasn't the case. And I feel like it's always going to be, it's got to be a collaborative effort. And if uh, AMD kind of had, <laughs> AMD had the right thing in mind when it came to Vulcan. You know, you remember Vulcan, right? That's now dead. Uh, they had the right idea, but it, the execution. Vulcan, was Vulcan works in Doom, even though that's probably like the only thing that runs Vulcan at this time. Vul Vulcan's here. Vulcan is a feature. You gotta, you gotta pay attention to Vulcan. I had people all the time that would call me and swear up and down that Vulcan, uh, AMD, ATI, everything like, Vulcan's a feature. That's the way it's going. AMD's done. And uh, okay. But if you remember DX11, that took forever to implement, and they still haven't implemented all <laughs> the features. DX12 is still a thing. I don't <laughs> know, William. That's a great question. DX12 will probably, by the time we see it implemented, DX13 or 14 or 82 or whatever will exist. Mm -hmm. And there will be more features we'll be talking about that won't necessarily be ever be implemented in the games. Just like what happened with DX11. So, status of AMD GPUs? Oh, Dave, well, Dave, Dave, Dave. I can tell you from personal experience, Dave. I'm in the process of doing some R&D for us in an exciting new product. I won't reveal a whole lot, but it does require the use of AMD GPUs. And... Something I learned about AMD GPUs is they're 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 close to Intel performance to a degree, but the one thing they're missing is that price point. If a lot of you Intel remember, performance, uh, AMD, In yeah, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> so NVIDIA's performance compared to AMD's is um, it's just not there the way it used to be. For example, back when NVIDIA released the the, the 200 series graphics cards, you know, GTX 260, 270, 280, uh, there were the, the HD. Uh, 4800 and then there was the HD 58, 5900, right? The price to performance, the, the value out of those AMD cards was spot on. So like a card that would compete with a, with a 270 GTX that was priced at, we'll say 350, AMD would have an equivalent that was like average of one to six frames different at 199. And you were just like, oh, whoa, like they had the price point there, but that's not the case anymore. Now you're paying $20 less for like, 15% less performance, and you're just like, get out of town. It's just not worth it. I want to see AMD get back to that point again, and I'm really hoping they can take what they've done with Ryzen and Threadripper, and they can get back to the point. I have every confidence they will, but it comes down to their resource allocation, and based on all of the people they've been recruiting for the AMD team, it's likely what's going to happen. So. Engineering capability, I feel like, is a strong one. I feel like the 7 nanometer oh, yeah. Vega could potentially be a good one. But I think the real changer we're going to see is when Navi comes out, which yeah. will be 7 nanometer plus. Navi. And I think even though a lot of people, it was it was really trivial and some people felt it was petty for AMD to do. But when they pointed out that NVIDIA was sabotaging their GameWorks games with uh, the hair physics, the Tress FX, like, oh, we can't keep up with it. Hair physics. Ah. Well, Tress FX is actually AMD. Tress FX is AMD's Tress and, FX and is it was AMD's. completely broken it's on uh, Witcher remember, 3. Well, no, remember the very first implementation. Remember Tomb Raider? Tomb Raider. When you'd start it on an NVIDIA card and her hair would go... Well, that was, AMD, that was AMD doing it. And But the thing is, what, it, what has merit is AMD looked at it and went, our bad, and they fixed it for NVIDIA. They legitimately fixed it. NVIDIA came out with The Witcher 3 in Gameworks, and people are starting up AMD Radeon games that should be playing it no problem, and it's down at like 15 frames a second. And somebody ended up having to go through the config files and see that the the nvidia hair effects was like a tessellation of like 64 times and they're just like why what is this drop it down and up fixed radeon performance so i mean yeah like the default the default settings they had that so that it basically into in it i do feel like it was intentionally hampered it, it was, was like it was like they put that in there it's like oh you got a radeon gpu here let's crank this up to screw you it was and a lot of the points that people made a few points that i wholeheartedly agree with was that this is what happens when you allow an industry to a degree to go unchained. Like there are no laws in place to make sure that there's fair practice within the industry between manufacturers. You can literally execute dirty tricks like that and there's nothing anybody can do about it right now. There, literally nothing. And we as consumers suffer from that entirely. Nobody really can do, or maybe they feel you feel like you're powerless, but it's kind of like the GPB, man. Like look at what we as consumers and as you know companies did 
we voiced our opinion, and, a and NVIDIA backed off. They were like, okay, sorry, we're not going to stick that there. Except, we'll wait. Except a key blog post that said, this is your fault, because we tried <laughs> to do something nice for you. That's fine. That's petty. It's, it's petty. Oh, that's petty, <laughs> NVIDIA. It's petty. No. God damn it. No, William Johnson, he says, another good one. He says, since NVIDIA has largely abandoned SLI, I would love to see AMD really push InfiniFabric, I'm guessing it means Infinity Fabric, for yeah. GPUs. Yeah. And even if slower, slap like 48 GPUs on a card, please God, no. I'm an old school <laughs> ATI quad fire junkie. It's why I got into water cooling. <laughs> hey, I'm totally cool with the, like, I'm totally cool with even dual GPU yeah. on a card. But the thing is, like the whole, what they call SLI on a stick or crossfire on a stick. Slistic. Especially as, GP, especially as GPUs get more powerful. Maybe as we have like PCIe 4, it might be realistic to have dual GPU on a card. But now if you took like, let's say dual Titan V, just for example, just for example's sake, you could saturate a PCIe bus, I think. And or for dual Titan Vs, you could buy a second house with that down payment or dual Titan Vs. Or you could sleep with that as your pillow. You could really take a pic, uh, take a pic of that. I thought you were going to say you could just sleep with them. You could. But I was not going to go that direction until you brought it up. Well, too late. A and D will pull out of GPUs. I mean, you're right. They could pull out of GPUs. If, if and I am right, sell off their their faction of the business to Intel, and that's why A and D is collaborating with Intel. What if that's it? He or, says. He says, if I'm right, Shannon owes me dinner. No. Well, actually, I guess I owe you dinner. He doesn't define what dinner is. That could be anything from McDonald's to like a five star restaurant. So dinner, you, dinner, and a movie. You don't even be right. I'll just, I'm, we'll just do it. Shannon owes you a Big Mac. <laughs> Big Mac. Oh, man. Oh, boy. But, I mean, that, you could be right, Dave. You could be right. Maybe it's not a matter of AMD collaborating with Intel. Maybe they are working on a, on a way that Intel is simply just going to absorb AMD and they're part of the Intel family. What, what I'm really hoping for is that, it, that AMD, and I think what William Johnson was trying to say was AMD Touché, improves. Touche, <laughs> Touche. AMD. AMD hopefully will push their multi-GPU usage, whereas um, because they run it open, it's it, a lot of their stuff is open source. A lot of it's just freely available. They use you know standard they use Vesa standards, things like that, like with their FreeSync. Right. So there's a good chance that they can open it up so that developers can easily implement multi-GPU, and that could very that could very well push toward better gaming performance on multi-GPU AMD, whereas Nvidia unfortunately. Wow, that's creepy, Joe. I like it. Thanks, Tufu, for the weird, weird, weird. Uh, that's nice. For the weird the screenshot, um, I'm hoping they can push gaming performance on a, in an easy to implement way, so that we can now go back to truly having multi GPU without having to buy a two thousand dollar card or five or whatever thousand dollars are going to start charging for the top end flagship cards, just to be able to play at optimum optimum resolutions with like HDR or something. Right, because you, you know HDR is the new thing. It's going to be that requires so much bandwidth to push the amount of pixels that you want to do, along with the uh, refresh rate you want, along with the uh, color depth. Right. All that stuff takes GPU horsepower. Oh yeah. And like we Easily. said, like we said uh, two weeks ago on the last live stream we had. By the way, uh, for those of you, we uh, hope you had a good fourth and all your fingers are still attached. My ours I mean, are. I, I mean, oh, yours, I, yours are too. All of them. See, all fingers. <laughs> I only lost two. I did. No. Um, yeah. Everybody uh, is here alive and well. That's that's good. Thank I didn't you. check everyone's fingers, but I'm pretty sure everyone's. I mean, obviously. I don't think anybody would tell us if like, they blew their hand off. Anyway, it's like, hey, guys. Great to see the live stream. I'm missing a hand now. Well, I mean, if they're slower to respond to emails, we maybe hope. they only have one hand. We hope that everybody is safe and sound and that you had a very pleasant Independence Day and that you enjoyed America's birthday. Yay, birthdays. America. Because America. Yeah. Did you have a fun one? I did. It was great. Uh Really, really long, busy day. Got to hang out with family and sit in the beating hot sun. Barbecue. Awesome. Played some cornhole. What? Cornhole. I didn't say I, uh, the action of cornhole, like played the game cornhole. I have no idea what that is, but they cool. Not, they don't have that out in California? I guess not. I kind of feel like we could have asked Brooke to like find a cornhole board and put it up <laughs> on the screen for you. But yeah, you just you throw some bean bags in a hole. Like, <laughs> okay, well, really? there, there we go. <laughs> this, this California man over here, is, I don't know what corn all is. We just have high emissions and oh, this water shortages. This train needs a steering wheel so badly. Um, I mean, trains don't have steering wheels. <laughs> needs one. Needs one so bad. It's like this submarine needs a screen door. 
What is happening? That's a sweet meme, bro. That is a, that's a sweet meme. <laughs> it's not what I wanted. <laughs> oh, right there. Oh, no. There that is cornhole. Oh, See? wow. Two boards with a hole in the end of it, and you put your bag in the hole. So basically, you just got to get your thing in the hole, and you're good. Your bag. I got you. You have to toss your bag into the hole. Now, do you do this really close? Do you walk up to the hole? No, or? there's like for people that are serious about it, it actually has to be a very specific distance apart. <laughs> Hmm. I have a uh, I have a a friend of the family that would make those by hand. He would airbrush them, and they looked amazing. And he did a set of transformer ones, and like I cried, they were so amazing. <laughs> I okay. <laughs> so <laughs> meat truck. <laughs> Wait, what? Why? What? It's a meat. What's a meat truck? <laughs> what is? Marie just comes in and says meat truck. Why? Like, that is so what random. Is the yummy, yummy meat wagon. <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. I, I feel like I feel, this this train just it just derailed, exploded, ran into like a bus. It's it's over. Hi, Brittany. How you doing? Hi, Brittany. Who's Brittany? Where? Hello. Who's Brittany? She, she used to work here. Oh, not like long long ago, like way prior to your time. Sorry, Brittany. I don't know you. That sucks. <laughs> I, I feel bad for you or for her. I feel bad. I don't like, know whether to take that as an arrogant statement or you're like, I wish we could have got to know each other. I wish we could have known each other. Could have yeah. been so much better. And it's, apparently, somebody thinks you're drinking moonshine. What? Yeah, Dave, put the moonshine down, Shannon. They didn't say Shannon, but yep. Wow, Shannon, you played it at my mom and dad's once. Wow. So maybe you should put the moonshine down or, you know, other things. This is water. <laughs> like, I, can, I can hear that now. She's telling like, Shannon, you played that at my mom and dad's once. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing. Somebody just told me to put something in the hole and I listened mindlessly. <laughs> in some countries, that's illegal, Shannon. Depend, depends how old that board is. Just saying. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, so I can't. Uh, so, uh, actually, some pretty cool SSD news. Uh, Samsung announced they uh, started production on fifth gen uh, VNAND. Whoop de doo! How cheap is it? That's all I want to know. They don't have pricing yet. Of course not. But you know why? Because they're going to get a feel for the market and they want to see how much they can gouge everybody for it. But that's the thing. I mean, when it comes down to it, what kind of SSD do you have in your system, Joe? Samsung. Yeah. Why? <laughs> why? Because it is quality that I trust. And now they're basically pushing the capacity. So it's going to be like QLC and stuff like that. I'm totally where, cool with it. I'm just being a pain in the ass. Where they're going to be able to have massive. So you can have your massive, even way beefier game storage drive, hopefully for a lower cost. Because remember your whole, uh, what was it? Two terabyte or four two, terabyte? Two, two terabyte. Two terabyte for Steam SSD library. for your Steam library. Yeah. So imagine if all of a sudden you have access to an eight terabyte for a similar price point, maybe. That uh, would be pretty sick. I don't know sick. whether I would buy it. I mean, if I did buy it, I'd have to keep it on the down low because there's no way I could possibly justify that to the commander in chief. So, well, then again, the, let's talk about the wonderful HDR monitors that have fuzzy screens. I mean, those things two thousand dollars. You kidding? Yeah. Me? Well, that whole that whole Chroma issue, because of the fact that they tried to pass that through an output that simply doesn't support it, is the entire reason as to why I'm going to go with two K. I'm going to do the ASUS two K wide screen, the ultra wide. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, there was a lot of Jake and Cokes. I think she means Jack and Cokes. So. Jake and Cokes? Yeah, Jake and Cokes. Who's Jake? Who's Jake? And what's he doing with all these Cokes? With Coke, yeah. Well, wait. I want some Jake and Cokes. Is that kind of like, it's not Coke? Or it's not Jack Daniels? Is there like, is it a Jameson? Dave's talking crap like as if I have a lot of gray hair. Those are all named Ashley for the most part. Some named Joe, but still. What? Ever since I've started doing this live stream, like I've gotten more gray hair. Okay, now we're going to get more to do <laughs> thumbnail shots of you at every live stream and see that your hair has always been that gray. <laughs> Leave me alone. Your hair was that gray when I met you. Damn it. <laughs> you might be right. You'll know when you're getting old when your arm hair starts turning gray, okay? Your arm hair is not gray. You're fine, dude. This is just called becoming more established. Simple as that. I just named everyone after Ashley, pretty much. No, like, have you seen, like, the memes where it's got, like, you got memes where it shows, like, actors getting older and what, like, women think of when they see a man that's aged that's all, like, astute and, like, spiffy looking and they think of them when, like, they're aging and it's just basically, like, a dried up tomato. 
<laughs> wow. I'm not saying that to be sexy. We talked. We talked about. We talked about people aging badly, like Axl Rose, and like. <laughs> oh, or, or, yeah. When they compared Tom Cruise aging, and then it showed the actress, the supporting actress. Oh, from, from Top Gun. And what she looks like now, and the oh, caption. Oh man, just she's said like that, a prune. And the, yeah, and the caption just said that women age like avocados, but I don't find that true because there's plenty. Of the, I think men and women all age differently. It just depends on your genes. What is? I, what I'm is, probably going to age like an avocado when I get older, and then. Like, I'm, I'll just do nothing but play video games like I used to when I was a kid. Like, Joe, it's going to be my beginning and my end. What do my genes have to do with how I age? I mean, if they're dark blue, do you age differently than light blue? If the camera could zoom in right now, it would just zoom in like... And you'd just be dead? <laughs> I mean, dead. Uh, obvious pun number one. <laughs> okay, so as far as... Uh, we are actually catching up on some time here, so I feel like we're uh, catching up on time or we're catching out of time? Catch, catching up on the, the end of the show here, blah, 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 blah. or the scheduled end of the show, which we always end up going after. But that's going okay. Going over. Rip Shannon and Doghouse he goes. Yeah, Tufu, that's probably not far from the truth, but that's okay. Uh, William Johnson, I remember about 30 years ago at an IEEE meeting, they were saying that in 10 years all computer memory would be unified, no more main memory and storage, just a giant bunch of memory that was stored on 3D. Holodynamic photonic storage. Wow. <laughs> I, I. <laughs> it's not you, your tracks. <laughs> I'm done. I, I... Damn it, people. <laughs> I'm done. Game news. I'm done. For those of you who caught us, uh, Back when we were doing the Crew 2 live stream, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was woof, a, woof. Woof, a lot of <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah, now my wife's uh, saying woof woof because apparently, apparently I'm digging myself a grave or a tunnel that goes right to the doghouse. So Welcome that's fun to stuff. The jungle, Shannon looks like Maud. <laughs> he got compared to a dude before. Now he's compared to a dog. <laughs> I think she was more referencing that I'm now going to be in the doghouse because for reasons, I guess. No, we need to make a Jesus. game with Shannon where it's just like a doghouse, right? And then his head just pops out of the dark. Yeah, we need like, like a cartoon. We need like a cartoon like Snoopy or Doghouse, and I just go like boop and just stick my head out. <laughs> and then there's an audio after which is Shannon like woof. <laughs> Brooke already has like a floating Shannon head, like somewhere in like Premiere or something. She showed it to me once. Oh, we're gonna work on some stuff before the next live. No, we're don't gonna work. On Joe's do, Joe's not do, allowed to touch Premiere do anymore. I got audio for it though. I have to. Joe's <laughs> not allowed in Premiere anymore, and Brooke's doing things. I saw it on the screen. This is bad. <laughs> you just see like windows <laughs> flying across. The I see screen. windows like, flying across our screen. I'm like, oh no. What is that? What are you doing? Stop it! Please stop! stop. This I can't far anymore. I can't see what you're doing. Well, every time you make fun of me, another welt in the noose is created. Every time you make fun of me, another gray hair comes out. And I don't have much room for those left. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> I haven't seen you in years, Dave. Come on. Um, I'll send you blonde hair dye. Do it. I'm not dyeing my hair blonde. Do it. I haven't done that since high school. I, we're not saying brown with frosted tips. Blonde. No, I no. M&M blonde. No, I used to literally like blonde it out and do it like green and blue and stuff. Why am I? I'm not surprised at all. Dude, I used to sing for a punk band. Are you kidding me? Did not surprise me at all. That's just what I did. Did you drink a lot of energy drinks? Oh hell yes, I did. <laughs> dude, I was I was a total bro dude like punk rocker. It was just it was You're great. You're basic. I was I was a basic. You're a basic I was, bro. I was a basic white bro. That's for sure. <laughs> wow. I, I, without a doubt. Um, Basic bro rub. So how did you feel, Joe? I just got to ask, how did you feel about Crew 2? Because you did, we did get to play it a bit. Um, you know, I have, again, I haven't played a racing game since uh, Need for Speed Underground. I thought it was great. I, I, I thought it was fun. I just, um, I wish I could have done it on a G-Sync monitor. I wish it could have been bigger. Like racing games to me, like there's certain games and, and this is where wish what the big, big format. Wish what could have been bigger? The screen? The monitor. Oh, okay. This is where the big format gaming displays is really going to like be a selling point for people like me, especially because there are certain games that I feel like, like the experience is met on a, a big screen. And then there's other experiences where it doesn't matter. By the way, uh, I did speak to our friends at Logitech because they gave us some gaming gear to show off um, on the live stream and have some fun and game with. You can't see it. Uh, here. Hold on. There we go. Put it here. Hey, look. Whee! So, they uh, talked to them about our Crew 2 experience and the fact that playing on a keyboard really sucks. And so they're looking at getting us some wheels. 
so that we can try Crew 2 again the way it should be played. Um, I'm going to steal NVIDIA's reference and say the way it's meant to be played with a Logitech wheel. But the other thing is this stuff you see in front of you. We're going to be setting up a giveaway pretty soon here, guys, with the next few weeks. Uh, we'll come up with some very fun uh, ways you guys can win some cool Logitech gear because Logitech really... How? Logitech really... Well, we're going to... Tell us more. We're going to announce that soon. But... But I want to know now. And if you win this, Joe's going to come help you set it up at your house. <laughs> Joe's just like, I don't know what to say. What's wrong, right, Joe? Okay. <laughs> you look like Wilson right now, just saying. Wilson? You're rubbing your nose on the back of the box. What are you doing? Well, someone's going to get a nose print on that box when they win it. And the smell of my hot breath. Mm-mm. So that being said, we are going to be uh, giving away all this awesome gear and probably some more because our friends at Logitech were like, we really like what you guys are doing as far as... Uh, Thanks, Logi. As far as showing, Thank you. showing off some cool gameplay and you know, some of the Logi gear. So they want to give you guys the opportunity to win uh, either a full price set or possibly individual pieces. We'll see how that works out, and that's great. Um, so I'm now a mouse pad. You got a lot of this guy. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I'm wirelessly charging, by the way. My name's not Joseph Mundy, it's PowerPlay. By the way, whoever gets this, wirelessly charge mouse and mouse pad. So you, you get the Yeah, you get the bundle, because we're not going to be a bunch of, you know, stiffs. Like, oh, you get the power play pad, and because of MSRP, that's all you get. You can afford to buy a mouse now, right? Yeah, because you really need to throw <laughs> that level of divorce on you, don't we? I've been there. But, wow, we've got to talk after the live stream. No, I mean, like, you go, you win something for free, <laughs> all right? And you're like, sweet, this really works great with this. Well, you got that for free, so now invest in that. You mean like when they, you go to a game show, and you win a car, and then you find out you have to pay, pay the 20, tax. twenty, thirty thousand dollars in taxes? You're like, oh, cool, I don't need that. Pay the tax, because Uncle Sam must. <laughs> must. So, we're going to give you guys a chance to win some of this cool stuff here, coming pretty soon. Uh, oh, I can't wait to give it away. The lucky man or woman is going to be so excited to play with some quality gear. I love this, because... Uh, because William Johnson, he goes, you guys like just like Logitech over Corsair because the Logitech colors are the same as AVA. No, no, not at, not at all. Actually, no <laughs> idea what you're talking about, <laughs> William. Uh uh, uh uh. Actually, Logitech is our uh, Logitech is really good partners with us. Corsair is really good partners with us. We had the colors first. Logitech used to be green and blue. Oh God, they did use. We've be always green. been blue. OG. I feel like I feel like that just got lost in like a bunch of people, except people no, old like old si like us. That was, a, that was a moment of silence. So the other the other gaming stuff I thought was really cool is uh, AMD slash Ubisoft work together to add FreeSync two and HDR support to Crew two, which is the game we play. Crew two. Crew two. Crew two. That that sounds too much like two. But that's just wow. Crew two. Uh, Dave said a very good one. He said uh, we need a new combat flights game. Way overdue. Yep. Dave. Try War Thunder. It's how about, awesome. How about if Christopher Roberts didn't decide to create something called Star Citizen and take almost a decade of making it, and he just simply made a new Wing Commander sequel? Yeah, new Wing Commander sequel would have been awesome. And uh, I'm sorry, what's going on with uh, Star Citizen again? What, that, that game still exists? I don't know if it's a game yet. I've heard nothing about it. I like, think it's still a really elaborate demo. Like, people just stop... After like three years of constantly reporting on it, it seems like like the tech media just stopped reporting on it entirely because they're like, all right, we're done. Like you, you've taken millions of dollars from people and investors and you just keep working on a game that there's like no end in sight. Yeah, I feel like I feel and like then, it's literally an elaborate demo at this point. And then the last time I stopped reporting on it was when they interviewed Mark Hamill and he was like, dude, I was so blown away that Chris Roberts asked me to come back because of all my work in Wing Commander. And when I heard he was going to be part of the single player campaign, I was like, oh my God, amazing. And it's like, well, he's going to be like, the guy that briefs you, but you're not going to play him. I'm like, that sucks. Want that. Nothing to do with it. That sucks. Nothing to do with it. <laughs> no. Nope. That killed it. Nothing. It was just, I think Christopher Roberts went from being respected to creating something new to now you're just taking people's money. By the way, one more gaming thing. I definitely, or one or two things I want to, uh, Google decided to troll a lot of people with their DeepMind AI, uh, put it into Quake 3 competition, <laughs> and it literally wrecked everyone's face. <laughs> Get wrecked, mate. It, it played better than any like human player. That's amazing. 
So uh, and they didn't say. Did they do it just for, like to gather statistics? Like, how would a human being react when put up against AI? Are they just like they? No, no, It's AI. It's 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 machine learning. So it watched other people play and said, okay, I can do this. I can do this, and it just learned as it kept dying. And so now it just you like you go in with this, and it will just wreck people's face, dude. Have you seen the meme of when they? I love the little troll emblem on the right. That's great. Did you have the meme where they, they had an, an AI for deep learning watch like a dozen Olive Garden commercials? Oh, no, yes. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> it created its own Olive Garden commercial. It created a script. <laughs> it was And it was amazing. Now, we got to like, find that for next live stream. For next live stream, we've got to. Can we act it out? Yes. Can we act out? We're going to do that. So How just, many? Hold on. At the end of the show. Hey, we're Brooke gonna, or Shannon. We may need one of you guys as a third person because I think there might be three or four people in that. There is. So we may need you guys mic'd up for this because we've got to act out the script that the AI wrote for a Olive Garden commercial. And, and depending on how that Maybe works, we'll have Alex join us. De- depending how that <laughs> Alex on, no, no. This, this is Alex's face. <laughs> Alex is pure horror. <laughs> I was like, nope. No, this ain't happening. Depending on how it works out, maybe we can do our live streams. We can do like little bits at the end that are just kind of fun stuff. And we can do like, we'll act out like deep learning scripts. Like, we, oh, you mean like when, we, when we're when we recording videos and we end up doing like the silly stuff, like you standing on a ladder yelling at me as I'm eating a chip? Wayne's World? I No, I get the reference. I'm just wondering how many people besides you and I get it. I mean, after how many movies we've mentioned, and people are like, "I have no idea." It's like I, I feel like I feel like we're getting past our age for that. Oh, there's one thing that concerns me with that whole uh, deep mind AI thing. Are we gonna start seeing AI level cheats? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at PUBG. Well, no, no, but I'm talking AI level cheats, where literally you just walk away and it just wrecks everyone. Yeah, that's gonna suck. I mean, that's what that 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 GeForce GTX USB did. Oh no, not that again. <laughs> And then EA broke Star Wars Battlefront 2 because reasons. Oh, I'm surprised. So basically, wow. when you play as Emperor Palpatine, your electricity could go straight through the walls and kill people. There's so, four people in the script, three friends and a waitress. Oh, wonderful. So and she's laughing, which means she's reading the script. Yeah, so you're reading it, right, Brooke? <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? I love that she's One over of there. One of them is like, I ate bread. I am bread. <laughs> see, like, now, mind, now mind you guys, Brooke is the one operating everything you see on the live stream right now. Yeah. And she can still multitask and pull up and read that script and laugh, laugh her ass off to the side. Brooke is also the lovely lady in which, in the photos with, with her and Shannon, who's also a lovely lady, okay, um, where she's hiding behind the PC like this. That's Brooke, just to give you guys like a frame of reference. <laughs> uh, la, 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 lasagna wings with extra Italy. Yes! <laughs> yes! That is one of the best lines in that script. This, this has to happen. This, yeah, this is going to happen. Okay, guys, you guys got to tune in next week because we are doing this. Yes, we, and thank you for tuning in this week, and we appreciate the fact that we were understanding that but, we took a little bit of a break in light of Independence Day. Real quick, Star Wars Battlefront, do you know what their solution was to fixing Palpatine's uh, attack problem? Remove him? Completely took him out of the damn game with no announcement on when he's coming back. No. And uh, the dark side. No, any, we're just going to remove you. Any Not comment on Tryon Worlds buying Gazillion? I know of Marvel heroes. Ah, uh, that's rough, something. dude. I'm not. I'm not something. sure. I want to. I'm not sure Dark we necessarily want to go into that too much. It's going to be. I, I'm interested to see how it works out, but it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Now, real quick, guys, before we go, we just want to remind you that we do have some cool stuff going on. Cool ways for you to save some money on new AVA Direct. Uh, rigs, some really killer machines we've got offered here. The uh, red, green, and blue sale, the one that we did for 4th of July. This ends Monday, the 16th. So if you're going to grab something up, grab it soon, because this thing is going to this thing's going to be ending pretty quick. Um, Optane bundle. I know you've heard a lot of Optane from us. Optane is an awesome technology. Say Optane three times fast. Optane, Optane, Optane. Nice. Um, so if you want a either Either a, uh, I, my, my, my brain, my, my, my brain, my brain, my brain just totally potatoed on that. So if you want, if you want a Optane accelerated system or an Optane SSD powered system, um, you can get some really awesome titles, including all kinds of cool stuff, such as uh, Halo Wars 2, which, yay, I'm not sure if I'd play that. 
I mean, it's just Command and Conquer with the Master Chief. It kind of is. Yeah. But, you know, Which, I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm glad but they, did they didn't new. kill it like they did with Command and Conquer. No, Command, Command and Conquer, Conquer was just like old Yeller just brought out back shot dead. Oh, yeah, no, they took it out back. They're like, sorry, you're getting a little old. Toosh! They plugged him in the back of the head. Hmm. Um, also, some World of Tanks stuff, because I know that's Kevin's favorite game, World of Tanks, for the win. And uh, then Warhammer Vermintide 2, along with all kinds of Magic Shoe Cast and Coral Draw and all kinds of really cool stuff. Shoe Cast? Shoe Cast. It has $610 plus dollars worth of uh, software if you purchase a qualifying that's i7 powered pretty system. pretty solid deal, guys. I mean, that's a lot of software. Not guaranteed you, you should use buy every a PC title. just to get this software. You could probably actually offset some of the cost of your PC just based on the software you get. I mean, you're good. But $600. You're... I know, dude. That's, that's nuts. And imagine if you find the right guy that's like, I was already going to buy all this software. That's a lot of stuff. If you're going to buy it, I would hope you already had a PC and you're just upgrading at this point if you were <laughs> if you're looking to buy that much software. Right. And then the Intel Gaming Bundle, it is uh, ending soon. It uh, ends July 31st. So if you're interested in that one, please be sure to uh, check it out and... Uh, Get your system ordered before it does end because that gets you uh, Final Fantasy 15, which I know Joe was super I excited have, about. I already have it. Still, buy a PC. Support us. Support your place of business, Joe. Get into a computer. You, you, need, you need one of these. Actually, you could probably use an 8700K or a 790DXE because that seems like a good life choice. And then you have the Intel VR bundle. That's going for almost ever, basically. That, that one's... It's going that, forever? I'm pretty sure that one's going to be going for probably the next, like, 30 live streams at this forever. point. Forever. Sandlot. Wow. That's that's awesome. Oh, gee. That, that, that's such a good movie. I, Frank I can't... Frank McGillicuddy. <laughs> and that's about it for you guys. Uh, for, for that's our, about it for us, too. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man. Between way, way to assume their, their participation <laughs> level, bro. So for you guys, you're done. I love it. All these people are hanging out and we're doing all this stuff. It's like, oh, Kevin's like, boo, World of Tanks. Uh, world <laughs> ah, but of Joe, tanks. Boo. But Joe, you don't like, uh, Kevin, you don't like things on rails? Come on, buddy. Uh, dang it, dang it, Dan, you're late. But you can rewatch this. We're going to post it up on our YouTube and everything else. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> I got a shrimp boat. Boat, that, that's that's my boat. That's my boat. Named it the Jenny. Called it Jenny. I knew it. I knew you were going. I there. know what love is. Why, why do you do this? I know. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I'm just. I'm. I'm so. What are you talking to? You're like. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is I'm great. I actually. I actually. I no. I've been. I've been battling a headache since lunch. So. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to push through this, folks. You eat something, dude. You but, want something? You want something my, mush? Huh? Some what? Something to nush. Alex, help. Alex, help me. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, so. Hey, guys. Um, please join us for uh, next week on Friday. We'll also, we should be gaming uh, Tuesday, possibly Thursday. We're uh, still working out some uh, scheduling because we built our brand new gaming rooms, which we'll be showing off here really soon. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. They're all green screened out. So Featured we by... Yours truly, <laughs> yours truly. And powered by Logitech. Gaming, gaming. <laughs> yes, and powered by Logi. Tech. Well, well, control Logitech. by Logitech. Unless you're unless you're on HTC, then there's no Logitech components That's involved. true. Powered by AVA. Controlled powered by Logitech. Powered by AVA Direct Killer Machine. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I see what you did there. You should. I like it. I think you heard what I did there. Anyway, guys. Oh, I also saw it. Next week, I can, I, I'll have whatever drugs you guys are on. We're high on life, William. High on dude, life. Dude, AJ live streams are the spice of life, bro. AJ live streams are the best, man. Ah. They're great. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not days to confuse now. <laughs> it's white lightning. <laughs> Thanks for the entertainment, you guys rock. Thank you, You're Dusty. Welcome, you rock. Dusty. You You're guys welcome. rock. Yes, you rock. And if you guys want to see us act out Hit some... Rock. Hit it. I'm just going to punch it and it's going to fall over and be, well, live stream's over. Bye. Okay, bro, what's up? Here comes Shannon. Ah! Ah! Coming through your screen. Watch us in VR. <laughs>
That's it. Next, Alex, we gotta do VR live streams. <laughs> a ABA abuse role play. Ha ha ha. So, if you guys want to see us uh, do some really, really entertaining readings of bad AI scripts or other things, yes. we're going to probably add a small segment to do that just because I feel like that'll be fun and hopefully right. you guys enjoy it. And depending on the response, if you guys like it, if you enjoy it, we'll do other stuff. Maybe next time we'll kick it up a notch and like we'll do a script, but like while we're putting hot sauce on our tongues. <laughs> William just said, oh great, now they're fisting us. And on that note, <laughs> you guys have a great week, okay? Thanks for joining, and, and hopefully, good night. Hopefully, we'll be here next week. <laughs>